Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. In New York, call 877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY, that's 467-369. In Connecticut, help is available for problem gambling. Call 888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org. Please play responsibly on behalf of Boot Hill Casino and Resort in Kansas. 21 plus age and eligibility varies by jurisdiction. Void in New Hampshire, Oregon, and Ontario. Bonus bets expire 168 hours after issuance. For additional terms and responsible gaming resources, see dkng.co slash football. Welcome in, everybody. Uh, Bear Bets presented by DraftKings Sportsbook. Score bigs with DraftKings Sportsbook, the best place to bet touchdowns. Download the DK Sportsbook app. Use the code BearBets. That's BearBets, two words, for new customers to get $200 in bonus bets. Uh, another another week uh, down, another week on tap here. Myself, Jeff Schwartz, Will Hill, and uh, John Murray from the Superbook will join us in the Gambling Group Chat to kick around a uh, bunch of NFL topics. Maybe some uh, Premier League soccer in there as well. I'll try not to fall asleep during that segment. Wow. It's not very nice. Don't, you can't talk about our friends like that. No, no, I'm talking about you giving soccer. Picks. Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, yesterday, heard I played, uh, I had, I, I, I had uh, Brighton under a goal and a half, and uh, it was 2 0 in the 80th minute. And uh, Kwanzaa, stupid, stupid giveaway, gave Brighton a goal. Oh, no. uh, Liverpool scored again and uh, 3-1 and then 88th minute uh, shot from outside the box, deflection right off of Kwanzaa's leg and always, when, go, always going one way, ball went in the other. Yeah. So you, hate, yeah. you just hate when that yeah, happens. Yeah, that was, yeah, oh, oh, I hated it. Yeah. And then we had the Yankees last night. So uh, your, your boy is, uh, your boy's hemorrhaging money right now. So I, 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 I need you to help me out here. When you're watching a soccer game like that in the house, does, what does your wife say? Does she does she even notice? Well, these games are on in the afternoon. Oh, so she's not even no. around. Oh, no. perfect. Yeah. No. My wife has sort of figured out I gamble, just barely. Oh, my wife has figured that out as well. <laughs> see, 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 but she's good though. She always she will always say like if we have a, uh, a a game a football game on or a baseball game on or bat, board or whatever basketball sometimes she has to really be in a, in a an apathetic mood about really not caring at all about what's on TV because basketball, she doesn't like I put, try to put a college basketball game on that. That's like, if I want to get rid of her and want to send her upstairs, I'll put college basketball on. Okay. But, uh, yeah. she was like, who are we rooting for? So like some, and I'm, and sometimes I'll say, ah, nobody, I just have it on or some, she's like, I just, I just want to know because a lot of times there's a, we need to be rooting for someone because she wants to go to, Turks and Caicos in, in Europe in the spring <laughs> to know who to root for. At, 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 at this point, we'll be, we're going to be going to like uh, Camden for our, yeah. uh, our, our our summer vacation this year. The spare day Camden if, in the podcast. If the couple of weeks, a couple of weeks <laughs> pop up. So tell me, yeah, Chiefs or Ravens in the AFC? I mean, or Bills. <sighs> The Bills are the ones I probably well they they all have flaws right. The Chiefs have the least amount of flaws. I would agree with that. Even though I think the Watson injury at corner is a big deal. Yep. Um, they don't really have a backup there that that they feel reliable with, but Spags can probably figure it out. And it sort of feels like at any point, Mahomes, he wasn't bad last weekend, but just can be better. I don't know, like the offense can just be better. I feel like the Bills offensively, Amari Cooper is a big addition for yep. them. Um. But defensively, injuries, and just they're not as good on defense. And the Ravens, they sort of keep losing games they should win. Like, how how trustworthy are the Ravens come postseason time, Bear? Um, I know not, the Browns, they're not. I, I know the Browns played much better last weekend. But Kyle Hamilton catches that ball, and the, and the, Brown, different and, narrative. And the Ravens win the game. But that you could have made this in the Raiders game in the season. If, the, if this happens, that happens. What's crazy is the Chiefs are seven games in. I know, and they played one more game, one less game than mm -hmm. the Bills, but they're two games up on the Bills in the, in the loss column, and they play in a couple weeks, so that, that'll be sorted out. Mm -hmm. They're three up on the Ravens with a tiebreaker, so like the, the, the AFC. I mean, the AFC it could goes it, through them. It, if the Chiefs win in Buffalo in a couple weeks. Yeah. The AFC's done. Like that's yeah. they're the one seed. Um, 
So I, I think it'd still be the Chiefs for me. Um, and then just figuring out the back end of the AFC, in my opinion, right? Like who will win the AFC North? Right now, Baltimore's minus 165 pit is plus 180. Pittsburgh's not going to win that division, are they? I don't think so. Like their schedule gets a little bit tougher here coming up late. It is, yes. They play and, and like no division teams yet, right? And, and I know... Uh, have they, I don't think they have. No, I think no they have. It's very backloaded division schedule. And and I look, I know that Russell Wilson's been good the first couple of weeks, which has been astounding. But yeah, you're you're looking. It, it starts yeah. now at at Washington Ravens, at Browns at Bengals, yeah, back the Chiefs, and then at, at, two. At, yeah, last last four games yeah. at at Eagles at Ravens Chiefs. So, the, the, they're so, going to make the playoffs. Yes, yeah, the they're going to make the playoffs. Here's the thing about the NFL. We, we I'll talk about this a little bit later when it comes to um, some some of the other teams in the group in the game group chat. But <coughs> you know, the NFL still goes, goes in like month cycles of scheme with new stuff, right? So like you have the Vikings, right? The first four weeks really good. Teams figure them out next week. So you're like in the middle of the four week stretch with 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 Pittsburgh now, where. The Russell Wilson offense is coming into yep. focus. It's run the football and they've run the ball well against really two bad teams that's the last correct. couple of weeks. And then it's play action pass. Say that, that, that's very mean to take a shot at New York today after the Yankees. Like, <laughs> right, I forgot about that. Yeah. You take a shot at the Jets yeah. and the Giants. Wow. Do you think Daniel Jones will cover first base? That was. Yeah, he can. I, 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 I sat there. <laughs> I, I was sitting there and just like, and, and, and they showed the shot. I'm like, oh my God, Cole didn't cover the base. Because not going to get there in time. And well, Rizzo didn't even he he rightfully did not even attempt to go there because right. he thought his pitcher would be there. Correct. Right. Like that's, that's what they day, say. Day one spring day, training. It is right? day one spring training. You run, you run to the line and you run up. You run to the line, you run up. Yeah. Uh, day one spring training. And it sucked too because Cole pitched so well. He pitched well. No one runs, right? I believe nope. no one runs. Um, so uh, it, look, the Steelers have done a really good job. I will give Arthur Smith credit on this. Designing offense for Russell Wilson. I mentioned it's running the football. It's play action pass. Also move the pocket, right? They're moving Russell Wilson out of the pocket, which what it does bear is give you a one read. You read, you read a linebacker, you read a safety, right? So it doesn't allow Russell Wilson to have to scan the field and pick and, and, and find out what things. And then in the deep ball, which we know he still, he still throws really well. Well, teams will figure this out, right? So the back half of the season, when you play the better teams and they send a pressure from the right side, so he can't roll out anymore. What is the change in the Steelers offense? So I'm curious to see that, but yeah, they're, they're going to be a playoff team. The Mike Tomlin, Jim Helpert moment where he turned the camera, and gave a thumbs up, was so <laughs> he might as well just given us two middle fingers. <laughs> Jeff Schwartz, you did not believe that starting Russell Wilson was going to help this team. F you. Not many people um, did. Not many people did. So uh, I saw Baltimore in, in that division bear. Uh, Seeing that division quickly, um, are the Bengals a playoff team? Well, it, we, we talked about that last week with John and I like getting sucked in by them. And I was going to ask you kind of the same thing. You'll look at the seventh seed right now in the AFC. It's the Chargers, four and three. The Broncos are five and three. Ravens, five and three. We think the Ravens are safe, obviously. But, like, could we get the Broncos and the Chargers both in the playoffs? Like, I, I know Joe Burrow was kind of, okay, we got to win seven out of nine or whatever whatever the hell it is. Yeah, the, they have nine games left. Uh, the, the, the rest of the way. And if, if you look at the schedule, uh, you got the Titans. You've, you've got the Browns. They need, they need six of nine, essentially, to be to get to, to nine wins. I mean, Raiders, Raiders uh, coming up yeah, yeah. this week. I don't know. The, the thing about it is, the thing we could. I have on. the ticket, but I, I'm yeah. I'm not as confident now, just because they just. <laughs> okay, so the thing we could it's rely on. Bad. Correct. The thing we could rely on with Baltimore with the Bengals the first month of the season was the offense. The offense is really good. And now the offense scored 17, 14, and 17 in the last three weeks. They're not scoring anymore, Bear. And one, and one I was going to say, and one, did you, oh, because you had I, I, I did not count the yeah. kickoff return. Yeah. I, no, I didn't count that. That, okay. was, that was 14 points, uh, offensive points. Now, they have the Raiders this weekend who stink, and the Raiders, I mean, they'll probably beat the Raiders. Are they going to win in Baltimore? I don't know. Are they going to win in San Diego or Los Angeles? Because <laughs> the Chargers. San Diego, it's San Diego. It's the same thing. Um, so I, I would say no, Bear. I have nothing on this market right now. I won't play this market. Um, I would say no. And then the question I think becomes, is Zach Taylor their coach next season? How, look, I don't want to fire coaches, but how can he be? Well, they didn't fire Marvin Lewis for 14 years, probably. Well, well yes, that, that's the thing. You're, you're talking about an organization that's not going to want to pay multiple coaches and get rid of someone. That, that That's the, that's the deal. But you had, 
you had the one year magical year where they made they made the they made the Super Bowl, but I don't know. What we do know is the Chandler Group Chat is he'll be back. He'll be he'll be back. They 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 won't they won't they won't ask him after one losing season here. Okay. So that, that he'll be back. Like I don't know the terms of his contract, but I, I think if this were a more progressive, forward thinking organization, like you're gonna scold me here shortly. We we recorded the gambling group chat a little while ago, and you scolded me for my take on Anthony Richardson and the Colts. And well, let's call you and take. I gave a different opinion about about what the goals of the franchise are. Right. So if the goal of the franchise was to build toward like, yeah, but again, I don't want to. I don't want to fire anybody. I like him. I like him personally. I like him personally. Here's so. the Anthony Richardson tweet before we get to the game with your chat. You ready? Mm-hmm. NFL pass attempts before being benched. You ready? Mac Jones had 1,300 pass attempts. Kenny Pickett had 713. Bryce Young had 583. Now he's back in, obviously. Desmond Ritter. He's a backup on what team is Desmond? I saw his name the other day. He's a backup somewhere. Uh, uh, 469. Anthony Richardson only 217 pass attempts. He didn't even give a chance there. That, that's my that's my point. You know who we're going to give a chance? We're going to give a chance to John Murray and Will Hill in the Gambling Group Chat. Kick around a bunch of stuff this weekend in the NFL. Enjoy. Gambling Group Chat time back once again. Myself and Jeff joined by Will Hill and John Murray from the Superbook. Uh, the good thing tonight uh, for Yankees fans like myself is that we get to watch the New York Jets for a little bit of a pick-me-up, uh, play football uh, against the Houston Texans. Uh, lines kind of, a, it, it's two in most places, one and a half at DraftKings. Uh, John, you guys got two, 42 and a half. Like, yeah. explain this to me. Like, like is this a, an influx of like, I can't believe the Jets are favored and people are coming in, betting the Texans, despite the fact that uh, Nico Collins and Stefan Diggs are out? Well, explain to me why I'm going to bet the Jets again, because I've done it like <laughs> you and me both. four times this season. I've never won any of the bets. I've never really come close on any of them. I've never enjoyed any of them. I've never had any fun <laughs> rooting for them. But, uh, you know, right now it's all Houston money. You mentioned it. Why is the line moving towards the Jets? It's the two receivers both being out for, for the Texans and the sharp guys. And I'm not calling myself sharp to be clear. I'll call you sharp. But the the sharp guys always seem to like the New York Jets. They've liked them all season long. They've they've moved the number on them a number of times. I I famously went down with them, infamously went down with them on a Sunday night game, Will, against the Steelers. I lost that bet. Um, And I I like them again tonight. (laughs) They're minus two. All the money's on Houston, but well documented this month, guys. But the side that the public is on in the NFL this month wins every time. It's been crazy. So the public is on Houston, but that seems like a good thing if you want to follow the public. They don't really lose this month. Yeah, th- this reminds me of, I don't know if you guys remember this. There was a Vikings-Cowboys game like two years ago. Remember the Vikings just got miracle win after miracle win, and uh, they were underdogs to a Dallas team with a much better record. And, and everyone was like, why is this line this? And then Dallas absolutely smoked them. I'm like, oh, that's why this line is this. This isn't that extreme of a case, that- but – uh, the Texans have only outscored their opponents by nine points. They have not been overly impressive. And now you're down your receivers. Now you're playing outdoors where they haven't been as effective. Uh, the Jets, look, I mean, we can all make the jokes and we've they've gotten plenty of my money and they're going to get plenty more when these futures get created. But I mean, they're, they're the bounce of a ball from being, you know, 500 a game or two over. The kickers kill them. Uh, I mean, the coaching staff has killed them. So they're not getting any more of my money. Life on the line, if I had to bet it, I'd, I'd actually pick the Jets to win. But, you know, at some point, you, you know, you, you touch the stove and you burn your hand and you touch it and you burn it again at some point you just stop touching the stove so i'm done touching the stove i do think houston's a good teaser leg uh i think like jets probably win which would probably rub, rub salt in the wound uh bear to all jets fans if they could win one or two in a row and, and make you look back and say oh man if we just you know had beaten the bills or the vikings yep. or any of these coin toss games denver yeah, uh last week was a game steelers game away. Garrett wilson It'll doesn't drop that ball yep all that good stuff yep you sound, exactly. like, you sound like looking Riley. You're just four points away from me. A no, for, if you're the <laughs> USC Trojans. Um, look, I, I think guys, the, the Jets, they're not well coached. It's Correct. very well documented. Correct. That's they, strike they, one. They spent three timeouts in the first quarter last game because they couldn't get lined up correctly and get Two? a play that call bad? in. 
Um, they, they they have cowardly punts and field goals. They're and, keep, and their defense is terrible. This is a good. That's so, a good. That's a so, good list. So betting on the Jets feels like something that I don't want to do tonight. And the Houston Texans, to everyone's point you've made so far, have not played their best football. I think we maybe overestimated, or there's a sophomore slump happening in Houston right now. So look, I think Joe Mixon over rushing and receiving right now in DraftKings is 110 and a half. That that might be a squarish play, but their offense without the two wide receivers will be run the football like we saw against the Colts. And then Joe Mixon on the backfield, like we saw against the Colts. That sort of has to be their offense. The last thing that worries me about Houston, if you're betting Houston this game, their offensive line of protection schemes are really, really bad. It's actually quite shocking how terrible they are at just sort of picking up pressure and Stroud understanding where, where the pressure is coming. This is a Shanahan offense problem, by the way. It's not just in Houston. So um, I'd only play the mix and over rushing and receiving yards. That's how I'd play this. Calling one. out Mike Shanahan now. What? You're calling out Mike Shanahan. No, it's a it's a Shanahan problem of like third down. Like they don't Yeah. So you're other calling, off you're calling out his offensive scheme uh, is other being, being other shit. offenses. No, it's, I know you're making you're mocking me. It makes sense. I am. And, <laughs> other their offense doesn't allow a lot of flexibility with the quarterback making changes, the line of scrimmage on third down, mm -hmm. where like Mahomes just does the protections in Kansas City, if that makes sense. So like when you get a line of scrimmage, if you're Stroud, the center does a lot of it. And that can lead to sometimes you're not on the same page between offensive line and center. The the other thing you Enough forgot the other thing you forgot about the Jets too is how they uh, Aaron Rodgers runs the play clock down all the way down and then they, and then they call the, they call the, timeout? the, the late timeout. Well, yeah. What do you say? He's taking cayenne pepper now, so he like oh that'll that'll solve the yeah, that'll he's, solve he's the problems. I'm sure I'm sure Jets fans, you love hearing like all the things Aaron Rodgers does oh, off the field. Yeah, it's terrific. I mean, it's clearly helped the performance on the field. <laughs> do you want him back next year, Bear? Do you just want a fresh start, or do you want Rodgers back? Because I don't. I mean. It will, what are the odds Rodgers, this is it for him? What 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 good does it do to bring him back? They're nowhere yeah. near. Like it, It's clear they're so far behind uh, the the Chiefs and the Ravens and the Bills in, in the in the AFC. Like, you're, 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 what, who, who are you bringing in? Head, they're, they're probably going to like hire Rex Ryan or something like that. Uh, Woody, Woody Johnson's going to read the back page. Oh, Rex, Rex loves the Jets. He wants to be here. Like, who the hell is going to take this job? It's a completely dysfunctional organization. You're probably going to fire Douglas too. Like, what an absolute mess. I'm, I'm not betting a, a dollar on this game tonight. Then again, I don't know how many dollars I have left after the Yankees just gave me an absolute <laughs> keister shot last night and just foot up, you know what, right there. That was that was bad. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to spend my time doing something more worthwhile. I'll watch, I'll watch Tulane and Charlotte and handicap the Breeders' Cup. Something really... A lock. I mean, the horse racing is a lock, a guarantee money maker this week in the Breeders' Cup. Nothing crazy will happen. That's a. I'll make all my money back in, in horse racing. The the, the, the most surefire way. Advice, yeah, exactly. Clearly, clearly, not clearly. It's a. Uh, yeah, very easy to yeah, win. Unfortunately, without a doubt, the takeouts not through the roof. It, it's just no. not, nothing. Nothing possibly could go wrong. Sure. Uh, it is at Del Mar. Del Mar is beautiful. We can't wait to watch on. Uh, Friday and Saturday, uh, the two Super Bowl teams, the uh, the Steelers and the 49ers, are off this week. <laughs> I thought, I thought, I thought you liked. I'm all, I'm all full of jokes this morning. I'm I'm frisky. I think I texted you guys the other day. I can't wait to bet, bet against the Steelers in the playoffs. It's gonna be a, oh. it's gonna be a great wager. Yeah, they they they'll be, they'll be one and done just like they were last year. Yeah. They actually played pretty well in that game against the Bills too, but there, there wasn't a chance in hell they were going to cover. But however, two teams that do have, uh, I think, Super Bowl. Aspirations, uh, this week's game, uh, this week's uh, Super 6 presented by DraftKings is the Lions at the Packers, your NFC favorite Detroit Lions at the Packers. Uh, Lions around three and a half. Uh, outcome will be the question this week. What will be the outcome of the game? Detroit covers and wins, or Green Bay wins ties, lose by three points or fewer. So I guess it kind of hinges on uh, the, the Jordan Love status, even though uh, Malik Willis. I, I'm going to start with you, John, just because it it all ties back to us with Survivor, uh, like it does. Two people left in that Survivor pool that I was talking about. I had the Broncos, like you, uh, like you and Kelly did, uh, in circa my competitor mm -hmm. in this two uh, two team league had Green Bay, and uh, somehow Malik Willis led them down the field to get a game winning field goal to avoid that game going to over. And so I thought, I thought there was a chance I, I was actually going to. Uh, win my survival pool last week. I did not. We go. We advanced this week, but I guess I can't bet the the, the Packers as a home dog here, uh, not knowing the status of Malik Willis. 
it's tough to get in front of Detroit, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, Detroit right now, they look like the runaway best team in the NFC, maybe the best team in the NFL. Jared Goff is it's so funny to me because I made so many Jared Goff jokes we all when he was in the rant with the Rams. Like I thought he was like a puppet for Sean McVay, and I used to make fun of him all the time. Nice call by me on that one. Now the guy is the best quarterback in the NFC and a, a possible MVP candidate. The public is going to be all over Detroit in this game, guys. They already are. We're going to need Green Bay big. Look at the time slot here, 425 Eastern. It's the big afternoon game on Sunday. The public is going to be all over Detroit. We've got them minus three, minus 118. We're going to be big cheese heads on Sunday afternoon. I don't know, man. It makes me nervous. I, I just feel like Detroit's a runaway freight train right now. I love Dan Campbell. I know they got a few key players out, but their offensive line is so good. Golf is playing so well. They look awesome. They're, they're the clear favorite to make it to the Super Bowl out of the NFC. I was going to say, is that the best futures bet you could make right now in terms of a, a team like Lions to win the NFC, Will? Uh, I, I mean, it depends what the number is. I mean, they certainly looked the part. Uh, I, I actually, I lean Green Bay in this game just because it is golf outdoors. You turn the calendar to November. If there's one kryptonite for golf, and I agree, he's he's got a different reputation now. This idea that he's a McVay puppet or that he's a you know product of the system. He's just a good player. I thought even last year in San Francisco, that loss, he played extremely oh, yeah. well. Uh, but Willis has not played poorly. And look, there's a I think if you're taking the three and a half, you got a little bit of a free roll that love plays. I mean, I don't, I don't know how conservative they'll be. I, don't, I mean, you're not going to get much ever out of these coaches when it comes to quarterbacks, uh, which is, you know, I was a little surprised. The Colts even announced early in the week that Flacco was playing as early as they did when they didn't have to. Um, I think it's Green Bay or nothing for me. I know Campbell is just a machine covering these spreads, and they're certainly the rightful favorite uh, when it comes to the NFC, but they still have a tough schedule. Um, you know, I, I don't know. What, what are you getting in terms of the numbers? Probably two, two to one, three to one in that range. I, plus I, 290 on uh, lines when the no, NFC. That, that, that's certainly not bad. You probably figure, hey, you got a good chance to be in the game, and then you got some wiggle room going mm -hmm. forward. But as far as this game, I, I like Green Bay plus the points. I'm with you, Will. Um, I, I think Jordan Love will play. It's an important game for, for, for the Packers. And the Lions are outside. We talk about this a lot. They only play two or three outside games all season. This is the first one in November. It's going to be a little chilly. We know Jared Goff. You know, Remember last year, they went to Chicago in the, the miserable weather and lost. Oh, like, they couldn't do anything. I, I'm not saying, look, the weather's going to be miserable, which I don't think it actually is. But he's not as good when he is outside. Um, and so... That has been proven over the years. We see that all the time. His completion percentage is lower. It throws more interceptions. Um, and I think the Packers are, are guys. I think they're just good. But the Packers right now, they're eighth in DVOA. They're good in offense. They're good on defense. They really have some great pressure schemes to confuse quarterbacks and hit quarterbacks. They're at home in this game. And the lines are riding so high, they're sort of due for a tough divisional game outside against a really good football team. So I have Packers plus three and a half here. I do think Love will play because of the importance of the game. If this was a different game where you could maybe Malik Willis, a, a team like they did earlier in the season, uh, I think they might sit him. But this is an important game for the, for the franchise, right? You division opponent. You want to win the NFC North, an opportunity to knock off the Lions here. So uh, I'll go with the Packers. Actually, it, it's not going to be nice. I, I just pulled it. Oh, it's not? Yeah, rain. Oh, give me the oh, rain, 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 rain and wind about 10 to 13 miles an hour, but yeah, steady rain. Oh, give me the Packers. Yeah. And plus, I think John, John, does this number, is this one of those numbers you think that that moves come Sunday? Sharps come in and take Green Bay plus the points. Yeah, it's it's it sets up to be a classic, like they call them pros versus Joe's game, Jeff, where I, I think the pros will be on Green Bay, but the public is gonna be on Detroit. You gotta always look at the time slot when you're thinking about what the books are gonna need. If this game was at 10 a.m., one Eastern it wouldn't be as big of a need, but because there's only a few games in the afternoon, all the money is going to be concentrated into those few games and it's going to be all Detroit. So I'd, I'd be surprised if it moved much towards the green Bay side, just because the books are going to need green Bay so big in this game. Looking at the, uh, the remainder of the, the slate here, the next, next one on our uh, little rundown here, uh, mm -hmm. Cowboys at Falcons. Uh, but boy, if Kirk Cousins could play the Buccaneers every week, he would be your runaway yeah. MVP candidate. Good, good grief. But we, we saw the Cowboys that what, what a weird game that was on, on what was what Sunday night, right? Yes. Yeah, the Monday night game was, uh, we, we, yeah. How can I forget? We got to watch the giants again on Monday night. Um, 
But yeah, Cowboys played a decent first half and third quarter, got the doors blown off and then had, had a chance to, to win that game and, and they didn't. Uh, Lions, uh, Falcons rather, laying, laying two and a half here. I guess push comes to shove that put, put me on the spot, John. I'd probably take the Cowboys plus the points here. Uh, field does feel like an overish type game as well. Total 52. Uh, Cowboys defense, I don't think, can stop anybody. Uh, but, but at the same time, at some point, you can expect the Cowboys to uh, put up some points. So uh, I guess favorite play here, I think, would be, uh, would be over. And if you're looking for a side, I'd probably wind up taking the Cowboys, which scares the hell out of me as well. But, you know, I got to tell you, that at least at the Westgate, it's been all Atlanta so far. The first two games we talked about, I knew the public was all going to be on Houston. And, of course, the public was all in Detroit. But I've been surprised at just how one-sided this Dallas-Atlanta game has been. We can't write a bet on Dallas. That's Cowboys. crazy. You know, they really did look good in the first half on Sunday night against the 49ers. They were winning that game at halftime. I think they got outscored 21 to nothing in the third quarter. And then the wheels just came off for them, but. I've been very surprised, Will. I would never have believed it would be all Falcons, even though they are off of an impressive win. I never would have believed it would be all Falcons against the Cowboys. I, I'm not sure why that is. Yeah, I like Dallas here. I, I think maybe I, I wonder if there's something to the idea that Dallas is such a public team that when they're struggling, their their issues are more pronounced and the narrative gets out there where, hey, if this was, you know, Carolina or Tampa or some other team, they were just middling. Their, their problems wouldn't be as loud. And, and if you ask anybody about Dallas, oh, they're awful. You know, Dak stinks. This team stinks. They don't stink. I mean, they're just, you know, they're not a contender. They're not what they've been the past few years when they've won 12 games, you know, three years in a row. Um, I, I, like I said, I like Dallas here. I think maybe this is a little fat and happy Atlanta team. They pretty much clinched the division last week because they swept Tampa. They own the tiebreaker. You know, the Saints, the Panthers uh, are not catching them. So Atlanta's going to win the division. This is kind of now or never for Dallas. You're getting a couple points. That's not like a big home field advantage in Atlanta. So I will uh, I, I will be sitting there hating myself probably with a Cowboys <laughs> ticket on Sunday, which probably won't be a lot of fun. Um I have uh, in this game, uh, Bijan Robinson over 73, 73 and a half rushing yards. Guys, Dallas is run defense is atrocious. They have allowed <laughs> at least 180 yards in four games and 28 points in all four of those games. They've only done that four times in a season, two other seasons, and they have a whole half season left. Like their, their run defense is atrocious. And so that, that's what kind of hurts them in games, right? Because you can't get your offense back on the field and you just get physically worn down by the opponent. And so I think Atlanta takes advantage of it. They, they run Bijan here, especially if, they're, if they have a lead late in this game. They're at home, fast turf at home. So I think Bijan over 73 and a half yards, guys, is the way to play this game. Look at you. You've, you've examined all your props already. I like it. It's a, it's a, I mean, I don't know. You're prepared. I, I like I, it. I don't like any side. I like one side this week or two sides this week. That's why I had to find other wagers. <laughs> it's, 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 <laughs> all, uh, all the all these games are just so ridiculous. It's a, it, what a dumb what a, what a dumb sport to bet on. Like I said, we need to bet on real things like like baseball and horse racing. What could possibly go wrong with the with the five run lead in the in the top of the fifth? I mean, what could possibly happen there? Duh. Anyway, and no hitter going too. Yeah, that's right. Uh, no hitter. Uh, uh, and you had, I mean, you win that game and like Otani clearly's hurt. He's not going to give you anything. Yeah, you'd have Rodon in game six, but it would have been interesting. But baseball season's over now. Unbelievable fifth inning. I'm sorry. It, That's a sad day. That's a sad sentence to hear the baseball season. I know it is. I, know I don't it is. want it. I don't like hearing that sucks. You, you know what I do like, John? I, I love Carabao Cup lineups. Like it was awesome to see oh, that that Liverpool lineup yesterday. Just like all the experimentation going on in in, in the midfield, and then you put Sobosly uh, up top with uh, Gagpo and, and Louis Diaz. It just I, I love that. They're they're, they're probably going to win that win, win the Carabao Cup. I think. Slot will want to like prioritize that it's his first chance as Liverpool manager to win uh, some silverware. Mm -hmm. City's out now. You, you drew Southampton, who's the, one of the worst teams in the Prem in the quarters. Like, uh, I am going to fire a bet on Liverpool to win the uh, the Carabao Cup, and I know maybe maybe you can put a little uh, put a little double in there. Liverpool Prem and Carabao Cup could get you and you and uh, well, you and Mister Sherman Barry, can put that up. 
fair for a guy who said he was out of money after the Yankee game. You're betting Breeders' Cup. You're betting Carabao Cup. I mean, it seems like your <laughs> pockets are pretty full, my friend. Yeah, it yeah. Sounds like you're doing pretty. I, well. I went I went rummaging through some uh, recycle bins oh. on on the, on the way here, and and, 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 and nickel and nickel and, and, and nickel can. It all adds up. But and if I can put some more money to, together, I, I was just looking. I was going to say, is it worthwhile maybe betting? Uh, the Broncos to make the playoffs. Now they're, they're getting nine this week at the Ravens. And then I went down and, and looked at the schedule a little bit. And I, I'm going to say, file it away for two weeks from now, because Broncos yeah. are five and three right now. Next two weeks have the Ravens and the chiefs probably going to lose both those games. So they will be five and five. You're going to yeah. get a better price. But after that Broncos Falcons at Raiders home Browns home Colts at, and Chargers Bengals. Like there's a chance they could rip off at least four wins from that group right there. That will put them at nine, and nine and eight might get you a favorable wild card scenario. If that's if they don't uh, even even get to ten. So, uh, and they play the they play Kansas City week eighteen in Denver. Yep. In theory, Kansas City could have their playoff position clinched, and then Denver could be a big favorite. Because I bet we talk about all of our bad future bets, and I got more than a few of those, Will. But I did bet Denver over five and a half wins, and one of the things I looked at was I liked a lot of those games that Bears talking about, and I think there's a good chance they'll be favored in Week 18 against the Chiefs because the Chiefs yeah. will likely have their playoff position clinched. If Denver is playing for something, if they're playing for a wild card, they'll be a, a decent sized favorite in that game against the Kansas City backups. So I, I, I've been really impressed with Denver. They're very good defensively. Bo Nix has acquitted himself well. They're well coached. Vance Joseph's doing a great job with that defense. The Broncos are not a bad team. Yeah, and I, I haven't seen them this year, but in past years, like when all when the schedule comes out, they put up lines, a lot of these books for every game of every week. And sometimes fading the best teams in week 18 is a good way to go for that reason, where you might get the backups if you're playing, you know, the Chiefs or uh, the Lions, the 49ers, because that those become exhibition games where uh, the other team they wouldn't expect to be favored is favored. Uh, yeah, may, maybe we all owe Sean Payton an apology because it was popular to make fun of the yep. Bo Nix pick. They started 0-2. Bo Nix couldn't move the ball. Look, they're, they're managing him. They're, they're you know, working around him, but he's played pretty well now. Boy, they really yeah. tried to uh, stick it to Carolina last week. I had the <laughs> under there, man. He's he's running fake field goals. He's going forward on fourth down. I guess Carolina didn't give Sean Payton an interview a couple years ago when that vacancy was open. He had to ax to grind. But Payton's done a hell of a job. I, I don't have a feel for this game. It feels like on the surface, too many points. But, boy, sometimes you step in front of this Ravens train when they're off of a bad loss, they're home, uh, and you can look up and, you know, it's 14 nothing before you blink. And I don't want Denver playing from behind in the script. So I don't have a play in this game. But, you know, Peyton has done a, a really nice job with this team. Some of us, Will, didn't yeah. think the Bo Nix pick was bad, by the way. I just want to make that clear. <laughs> um, so, um, I, look, I, I think the the question is, is the Ravens' pass defense really this bad, right? It was, wasn't good against Tampa Bay. They won that game. And it wasn't good last weekend. Now, if Kyle Hamilton catches that football that Jameis threw right to his chest, we're talking about a different Ravens team, right? And the next play, Ravens score a touchdown, and I mean Brown score a touchdown, and and they go ahead and and, and win that game. Um, good call, by the way, on that. Uh, I and the Browns. Oh yeah, that was my favorite. My fair wage of the entire season. And I'm um, pissed at myself because I for, you mentioned the bet, bet the Browns over three and a half. And oh, that one too. I yeah, got freaking yeah. sidetracked and forgot to put it's five that and a half in. now. No, it's, yeah. So I, I just think like. Backdoor cover feels possible in this game, right? Again, it, it, the Ravens' pass defense has been bad. Bo Nix can scramble around enough. He's getting comfortable with his wide receivers. I, I would say Denver or nothing in this game. I, I won't have much on this one. Yeah, and, and, and John, speaking of uh, good future wagers, and I guess you said it, we have a lot of bad ones. I kind of did the yeah. same thing out in that division as well. I played a Chiefs to win the division, Broncos to finish second. Uh, is and that certainly uh, I think has wow. a chance. I'm gonna have to examine what the, uh, the 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 rules are amongst of like say the uh, the Chargers and the uh, and the Broncos finish tied and if, if it's like a split or if they do with NFL tiebreakers, but I'll have to examine. But uh, that certainly has a chance. Um, something the will. It, it would love the see. It all comes back to horse racing, John. Yeah. It also yes, it all comes back to horse racing. Will you you and I talked about this. Uh, yesterday or two days ago, all the days blend together right now. Bears at Cardinals. And it was based on, a, I think it was a Bill Barnwell tweet about like the toughest and weakest remaining schedules coming up where the Bears have the toughest, I think, remaining yes. schedule. 
Cardinals have the weakest remaining schedule. With, with all of the questions surrounding the 49ers, uh, I had mentioned, is it worth betting the Cardinals maybe uh, to win the, um, the the NFC West just because you, you just don't know what's going to happen with all these Niners injuries. If you, if you look at the uh, the NFC West right now, Cardinals, you can get them at three uh, plus 320. But you brought up another interesting way to uh, to bet this, which might even have uh, a little bit more bang for your buck. And it's a little bit riskier, but but I, I actually uh, took your advice on this. Jonathan Gannon, 22 to one coach of the year, because if the Cardinals win the division, it's not a guarantee. It's not a certainty that Gannon's going to be coach of the year, but my goodness, that he's going to be on the very short list. He's going to be one of the finalists. And uh, I mean, Minnesota with O'Connell, they're fading a little bit. I don't know that the voters would reward like a Dan Campbell or an Andy Reed for, you know, winning their 13 plus games. Uh, Gannon's going to be live. If you do think the Cardinals are going to win the division, maybe you take a bet or you take a unit, whatever. And you put half of it on you know, plus three, whatever, to win the division. And you t- put the other half on plus 20, uh, on plus 2,200 because 22 to one to me is a great number. And the schedule upcoming, like you said, is easy. And you could look at them and you could poke holes and say, hey, they're only four and three. These games have all been, you know, one point, two point wins. But look who they've played. They've played the Bills. They played the 49ers. They played the Packers, the Lions, Dolphins with Tua, the Chargers, the Commanders. They have not played an easy game. So the fact that they're four and three uh, is pretty impressive. And look who they have coming up. They still play the Panthers, the Patriots, two games against the Seahawks, a home game against your Jets. Uh, the path is there for them to get to like 10 wins, steal a division. 22 to one is not bad for coach of the year for Gannon. What about Dan Quinn for coaching? He's yes. definitely going to be in the mix. Yeah. He's definitely going to be in the mix. I know he's a favorite right now. Um, but if he doesn't win I, the division and Gannon does, uh, Gannon's going to have a shock. I, I so, think Gannon's alive. So I have a question. Like, what what do the Cardinals do well? <laughs> I, like, like if we're talking about division winner, right? We talk about like, okay, I, I can give you something. The Lions do well. The Chiefs do well. I can even talk about the, what, what 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 the Niners do well, or even the Seahawks. I, what are the card like? What's their calling card? It's a weird team. Like the calling card is we've come from behind in, in two games to win by one point against the Niners and they, and, and they beat the Dolphins by, by one, beat the Chargers by two in a game that Herbert threw for 350 yards and they settled for five field goals. I, 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 I'm not betting this game, but what did, I, what did I the Giants do well a couple of years ago when they made the playoffs? What did the Steelers do well last year when they well, made the playoffs? The Steelers played good defense. Like they have like a calling card. It's TJ Watt. True. Like, like they have by the something. way, just by, by the way, John, that's where I'm getting all my money from. All these books are gonna just early pay defensive player of the year futures on on TJ oh. Watt. So I'm, I'm gonna have that don't, money. Wait, wait. I'm gonna have, don't do it. I'm gonna get in trouble with this. Don't do it. Do not do early cash out. Do not do it. I'm, can't, I'm no, but you, you, the, the right. books are gonna be kind and just give me the full <laughs> price on it because he's automatically oh, yeah. gonna win. Uh, if you saw the book's numbers in October, you would know that they're not going to be kind, my friend. <laughs> this is not a month for us to be all warm and cuddly. All right? No way. If Dexter Lawrence ends up with 18 sacks, which is certainly possible as a nose tackle, mm-hmm. can he not win the award because he's on a terrible football team? No, he won't. He won't. It'll be what? The Giants, oh, the Giants are going to be 5-12. and 12. Yeah, but that, What if that, he's on the Vikings in a couple weeks? That's a good point. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh. Now, now, you, now you have me worried. He yeah. followed the Vikings on Instagram for those of you. Oh, there, oh, oh, there, oh, there we, we go. go. There we go. There oh. we go. There we go. Yeah, that, that, that's the way it works. <laughs> <laughs> who, 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 who else followed who on uh did anyone any, anyone follow like uh, Olivia Rodrigo or anything lately, Will? Uh, I get back to you on that. Okay, appreciate that. Point is I don't know what the Cardinals are, and I would not put money on them. The Gannon one is interesting, though. That that's a that's a number that I think is worth exploring if you have a, a couple extra dollars laying around. Speaking of the Vikings, Will, big favorites this week against the Colts, and so much of the storyline this week was Anthony Richardson getting benched. You had to make that move, though. Mm-hmm. He's not good. You, oh, here we, here we. He's a, he's full of disagreement today. Well, okay, so, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, well, okay. Well, here's a question. Okay, okay. What is the goal of your franchise? Because. The, the goal of the coaching staff is a little different than the goal of the franchise, right? Because the franchise Correct. should be looking. Coaching staff wants future. to make the playoffs. Correct. And and I, so and you so, can. So for, for, from that perspective, I understand going to Joe Flacco because he's better. And Richardson was atrocious last weekend. He made some good throws, but just generally speaking, not good. Um, but the franchise, the, the staff in place, Ballard and Shane Steichen drafted Anthony Richardson. Which they shouldn't who, have drafted him for, but that's an entirely different correct. story. So you haven't even given him a full season worth of games because he's been hurt to see if he's any good. Now, he might not be any good. Like, that's certainly possible. He's never going to get better, and it's a waste of draft pick. 
it just feels a little early to pull the, the cord on him because I know people have argued, well, he can just come back next season. I don't know, but then you have then your third season of Anthony Richardson is the season to figure out if he's any good. You know, like you're wasting seasons going this direction. And now if you admit that he's not your guy and move on, like that's fine, totally fine too. But Flacco doesn't get them any closer to their ultimate goal of finding a franchise quarterback. All he does, Baron, you're absolutely right. He gets them closer to the playoffs this season to lose in week one. And then you're back to square one after the season of having no franchise quarterback for but, the future. But as a player in that locker room, like, like you, you, if you know that you have a better option to make the playoffs, I mean, well, well, sure. you, you, I, want, I, look, you want to I, play a playoff game. You want the best option yes. to win now because well, you, you, you're not going to be there. I know. To, I've been in a situation. That there's different things, right? Like as a player in the moment, you want Joe Flacco, right? Because you want to win a championship. But that's not the job of the front office. Job of the front office is to, is to sort of, again, map out the future with a young quarterback. And as a player who's been, we had Jeff to Jimmy Clausen in 2010. Like, yeah, you, you understand as a player, like, they're going to play him. Like, that's just, he's the guy they're going to play. And eventually he wasn't good enough. Brian, the Brian St. Pierre game um, <laughs> that Will won a lot of money on. Or did you win money? I, I forget if you won money on yeah, that Yeah, no, that was a good one for me. A yeah. couple pick sixes late. Yeah, it was. It was that was yeah, beautiful. It was great. Um, so, look, I don't feel sad for anything, Richardson. I think people are sympathizing with no. him in that way. I, I don't feel sad for him. I will tell you, though, the tapping out, which I was watching live, I was shocked. He tapped out of, he tapped out of a game, hit his helmet like a, like a defender does to get out when they're tired. And left and left the field for one play. Then admitted afterwards he was tired. That might have been the final straw. Bear to to your point about like players know who the better players they want Joe Flacco to play because they want to win now. And then your quarterback taps out of a game, which is never I don't know if it's ever been done before. That's probably the final straw for Richardson keeping his job. And, and Brian Flores was very diplomatic at that the, the media con press conference last week. So like I was I was tired watching him run around. He, so he, he was running he, for his life. He was. Oh, that was a bad line. But, but, but again, did, didn't didn't Steichen just Ooh. admit that they were just going to hand the ball off anyway? So like, yeah, it was third and twenty five or something. But the the point bad is, luck. and look, it's a bad look. So Joe Flacco is he is he any good? I, don't, I, I comeback player of the year. He can win it again this season. He's not going to win it again this year. <laughs> I know. Who I'm is going to win it again? Who is going to win it this year? That's a, that's a that's a I'm Mark. I have like no bets at all. Cousins? Probably cousins. <laughs> Probably cousins. Yeah, maybe. Is he favored now? In in the old in the, the old way would have been uh, would have been Jameis probably at this point. <laughs> <laughs> Any anyway, John, since we've had the quarterback move uh to, to Flacco, have we seen any uh, interest in the in in the Colts getting five, five and a half here in Minnesota? Yeah, you know, we saw it go down a little bit. I think this is one of those quarterback changes where, you know, you you bench the starter, you bring in the backup, but nobody thinks it makes the team worse. So yeah, I'm not really too surprised. And Minnesota is a, uh, is a is a survivor option. Yes, they are. Fair. I mean, that's a team. I I waste so much of my week thinking about Survivor and arguing about Survivor, and I know Minnesota is one option. When did they uh did they flex that game in the Sunday Night Football game? I didn't know they did the flexes that early. Because that wasn't the, that wasn't always Sunday Night Football, was it? No, they, oh. they they changed it. They changed the flex thing. I think they can flex any game like any time essentially now. But it was not the original really? Sunday Night Football game. Yeah, they flexed the Colts to Sunday Night. I think it was more, yeah, about, the, was it was more about the Vikings. Is my guess? Off of two straight did they bump? Well, I think they bumped Phil, just Phil, Philly. Just look at the Jackson schedule. Will and oh, Philadelphia Jackson. Jackson. Yeah. So yeah. Thank you, uh, thank you, NFL. Yeah, Appreciate that. that. Minnesota possible survivor option. I, I think that. I think a lot of money line parlays will flow into the Vikings, but I, I don't think it's going to be a big bet game. Uh, the Colts are not a very popular team. Dexter Lawrence will get a win here. Right back in it. Yeah, that's a lot of points the way. Now, look, Jeff, I'm not, I'm not an X's and O's guy, but from what everyone says, the Gus Bradley defensive scheme is just so vanilla that it you is. wonder against a good coaching staff like Minnesota with extra time to prepare. Remember, they played last Thursday. So yeah. They got 10 days to prepare for this vanilla scheme. You wonder how that goes. Flacco against the blitzing of Flores. He's a statue. Yep. And I, I, you know, speaking of Flacco, when did he become uh, viable? I mean, he was pretty terrible with the Jets for a few years with the Jets, the Broncos, you know, he's out of the league. And now it's just like, he's one of like the 18 best quarterbacks. It's very strange. Uh, I would lean towards taking the points just because I, th I do think this is a lot of points to lay Vikings lost Darisa. Now they did trade for cam Robinson. I don't know, Jeff, if that's a, uh, you know, if that, if that move matters at all, or that move helps 
uh, you know, incrementally here, but I just think it's a lot of points away. I think the Vikings are a good team, but this idea that, you know, the, the team they were the first five, six weeks that they're yeah. like the best team in the league, that's probably out right. the window. So it'd be a lean towards taking the points here. The the thing about the Vikings is, is sort of the, it's a good example of sort of the NFL cycle guys where the NFL tends to cycle like four, like every four weeks for scheme, like the, like something starts a season for four weeks, really hot, and then they get figured out. And the next four weeks, they struggle a little bit, and then they make the adjustments. The next four weeks, they play well. <laughs> it feels like where the Vikings are at right now, where they started really fast. Everyone sort of figured out what they're doing. Everyone adjusted. Now the Vikings have to readjust to everyone else. Um, and you're right about Gus Bradley. He, he he plays Pete Carroll's cover three, right? And remember Pete Carroll's defenses? They had 18 all pros on their team. The, the Colts don't have those players on their team. So you can't just sit in coverage and do nothing if you don't have Cam Chancellor, Richard Sherman, and then the four pass rushers they had and Bobby Wagner. It doesn't work that way, right? So um, I think that's the problem in Indianapolis right now. Um, but I, I think it's probably a stay away uh, maybe Vikings team total over because the Colts defense is sort of untrustworthy right now. And that game last weekend, if, if Houston doesn't fumble at the end, that's a 10 point game, right? The Colts kind of get blown out on the road there in Houston. I, I, I might, I might talk myself into laying the five and a half here. Come, uh, come, come oh. Sunday. I, I, I don't think the Colts are, ver- are very good at all. So I, I may, I may, uh, I may lay the points here with the, the Vikings, but you, but you're right. The, the Gus Bradley thing and the way they, yeah, he care with the like it reminds me of the old Florida State days with Mickey Andrews, defensive coordinator. Like it was like my eleven are better than yours. Yes. We're just we, we're 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 going to do what we do, and if you can beat, it's fine. But it, it has a, a feel like that. Uh, two more NFC West teams, and again, that was an ugly game, an ugly way to finish that game. Well, to bring up bad memories with the the face mask on Thursday night, allowing the Rams to get that win and kind of rejuvenate their season. Now coming out, we're, we're not trading Cooper Cup or we're in it for the long run. Uh, Rams are a small favorite on the road at Seattle, who was awful on Sunday against Buffalo. Never uh, really in that game, never looked like the right side. Just a, a terrible performance by the shorthanded Seahawks. Now you're uh, a short home dog against the Rams uh, in in a game that typically, if I remember, right, don't they play the Rams very close? I, I, or, or, or these games are typically very, very close. I don't know uh, if if I want. I remember in that that final, the Week 17 game a couple of years ago, where I think Seattle made it was it Seattle that needed the win to make the playoffs, and someone fumbled the punt late. Uh, I forget the, what, what the situation. There was a penalty or something. And, and Baker, I think it was a Baker Mayfield Rams game too. I think yeah, you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I can't remember the details, but, but I, I, I typically remember these games being being uh, pretty close. I don't know if I want to get involved in here just because typically, John, don't don't we see when in, in the NFL like when the, when these teams lay an egg one week, uh, usually the next week they they kind of bounce back and play a hell of a lot better. Uh, I, I don't know if I want to get involved either way here, especially laying points on the road with the Rams. I'd say this is the one game this week where we've seen a lot of sharp action. You guys, we saw some really sharp action on the Rams, took the line from pick them uh, right now. The Rams are minus one and a half. With the West <laughs> skate and then the that was a polite way by John. That was a polite way by John, by the way, when he, when he started that out with the, uh, we've taken some sharp act to say, bad. you're, you're not, you're not sharp at all because you don't want to get involved in this game. So I appreciate you letting me down softly there, John. Sharp at all. I, I had, uh, I had Seattle plus three in the big, uh, pick em <laughs> contest in Las Vegas last year. So yeah, you I and I both. So I don't, what the hell, I'm, but really sharp action on the Rams and the over this week. And that kind of goes against what I would normally bet. I would normally look to bet Seattle here because they look so bad on Sunday. Well, I'd go, I'd go on them after they laid an egg, but this is what I'm seeing at the window. Yeah. So this is interesting. The bills were laying three last week in Seattle. Now the Rams are laying a point and a half. We're saying that there's only a, point and <laughs> yeah. a half difference between the That's bills weird. and the Rams. I think if anything, there's value on Seattle. I mean, there, there's no point to me taking a point and a half. You just, you find a, a dance partner and you tease Seattle with, uh, would you tease the Bears up to like seven and a half? Would you tease the Texans up to eight tonight? There's a couple options, but Vikings uh, down. I, 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 I know, I know, I know, I know. Fez will yell at us for teasing, for teasing the Vikings down to like pay. Hey, yeah, we'll get yelled at for that because oh, you'll be scolded. Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll, which, I'm, I'm just looking for other options. Don't do that. Do not tease the Vikings. Tease Always the te- te- uh, te- yeah, I, one. Yep. Te- te- tease, te- did you say tease yeah. the Packers up to nine? Maybe nine and eight. You could do that too. Right. Browns are a good one. Yeah. Uh, no, don't tease the Packers. Three and seven. Three and seven, Bear. Houston is a teaser. 
Yeah, but Houston could they could get blown out tonight. Like like there there's a chance they may may struggle moving the ball. I, I know I know I sound like it, I don't know. It is dangerous teasing against the team whose quarterback is drinking cayenne pepper with water. I agree with that. <laughs> <laughs> oh Christ. Can, can I ask John a question about about uh, you can ask John you anything okay. you want. I got a question, John. It, what is the adjustment on the Browns with Jameis Winston? Because I feel like it's it's not adjusted enough because he is legitimately better than Sean Watson. Sean Watson is was is an awful quarterback. <laughs> that don't lines get adjusted six, seven points when, when when a backup quarterback is in. Does it does it go the other way with a Jameis Winston where he's that much better than 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 Deshaun Watson? I mean, it's almost nothing. I mean, I think Jameis gives them a better chance to win than Watson does. I mean, maybe they're a little better than they were. I think, I think they're better with with Winston and Watson. So it's a very rare situation where you had a team and they traded all this draft capital for a quarterback. He gets hurt. They bring in a backup that was cast aside by the Buccaneers, and we think they're better. So a very unique situation going on in Cleveland right now. I think they're markedly better. Like I, like I think that this I team I think so. is, I, think I mean, so and what, what I mentioned last week, which I think I'll carry forward, and we saw this with their defense last week, is their defense played much better because guess what? Jameis Winston converted third downs. Their defense got to rest a little bit, and the defense feels, which I know because I've been in the spot before, they feel like you can win a football game with that quarterback when when you when Everybody's Watson's got a playing. Pep in their step. Yeah, like I they're agree. just like ready to go. So I, I don't think, and we'll get to my best bet later. I just don't think the books have adjusted to Jameis Winston being the Browns' quarterback. You yet. You, you brought Jameis up, and I'm, I'm going to ask you as a, as a player as well. And I know, if, like, and I know I know how you feel. A player is getting their money at. If you're a Browns fan, first of all, and a player, like, don't you feel like you were lied to? Oh, Deshaun Watson gives us the best chance to win. No, he well, everyone, didn't. Ev- everyone, no, he didn't. Well, everyone knows they were they were lying because they had to play play him because of his contract. Which is, look, that's part of the NFL, right? It's it's why I say all the time when we get to training camp, guys, that like 49 of 53 roster spots are already taken because of contracts. Like, guys have to play based on their contract situation because the team has played them as is paying them to play. And so with Deshaun Watson, <laughs> excuse me, you're right. Very there. clearly he was being paid a lot of money. We know that to play and they're going to play him until they couldn't anymore bear. And now they can't. And now they have a, a different football team, but the same arguments made with like the Colts, right? Where it's like, do we just cut the cord now and go to a new quarterback and, and we're done with, but Richardson can be traded. He's cheap right now, right? But Watson make all that money. You have to play Watson. That's just the way the NFL economics work. And now he got hurt, and the team's much better for it. No, it, yeah, that's see, the Richards thing's an interesting conversation because, like, what do you do now? Like, do, do you what, and what are you going to get for you? You can't trade the fourth overall pick in the draft for like a sixth round pick. Well, well that's, I, that's well, all you're probably well, going to well, get. Did the Niners trade Trey Lance for that? Yes, but they also had a better quarterback situation behind them. And this is not they a, got year. a three or a four or something. They got something, they got yeah. more than they probably should. And this have, is not right? even a year for quarterbacks in the draft where you feel comfortable with a guy coming in. Who's a surefire franchise, like game changing. I bet Shadur last week on your advice, by the way, no, 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 I haven't plus uh, 600. Yeah. First uh, there, there, there were, there were some rogue nine to ones out there. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. And actually I, I wonder if Pennsylvania has that up. Cause I, I bet that when we were in Indiana. So I, I wonder if Pennsylvania has draft props available as well. I'm, when I, uh, when I when I get to state college in a couple of hours, I will I will I will fire up the all apps and see maybe it can add a little bit more to that. Uh final game Monday night, John. Hey, you talk about the money line parlays. Here they are, all rolled into the Chiefs, seeing some eight and a half pop up here. But uh my guess is you're gonna have your your Baker Mayfield jerseys on on a Monday night. Oh, big time, guys. I mean, it's gonna be Chiefs money line parlays, Chiefs teasers. Uh, and and just people betting on Kansas City in general, they're they're the most popular team at the betting window. They have been for a few years now. And Tampa Bay is off of a pretty bad loss that we talked about. Our defense is terrible. Yeah, but so Kansas City will be a very public side. Usually the, the the parlays all go to the Sunday night game, Will, but now this week I think it'll be the Monday night game going to Kansas City. So we'll, we'll be big Buccaneers fans. And then Kansas City is, is a survivor option too. Yeah. So they're, they're they're I think they're the biggest favorite on the board this week in terms of money line. Them or Baltimore. So they, they'll be a, a team that a lot of people will be using in their survivor pools. Saints probably would be a survivor pool option as well with Derek Carr coming back, Kamara, yeah, uh, Jamal Williams My, getting uh, healthy again, and the Panthers no I'm Deontay Johnson. 
I got a very outspoken partner there. You do? Kelly in Vegas. Uh, <laughs> yeah, she's got She's opinionated. No. And she's uh, very opposed to using New Orleans because it's a division game. Division game? Well, how many people are going to be at the Panthers game on Sunday, Jeff? On uh, Sunday? I don't know. I'm, I'm not, I won't watch one second of it. 7,500? Big, big home field advantage for Carolina and the Panthers there. Yeah, probably 7,500. Yeah. By, by the way, I you, you can pass along to Kelly. I, I think I'm going to bet uh, her on Mater to uh, to win the Big Twelve. I think it's a. I know this is not the college football pod, but but I think mm-hmm. Kansas State's in a, in a decent spot. They're going to be kind of a a toss up type game with Iowa State in a couple of weeks. Uh, and then BYU. What What do you mean by pass along? I'd like to think that she supports me by listening. I I, 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 I would think so. Like, like I think they I think they are a team. <laughs> well. I know you would you would support her if, if it were her pod, but he, oh, he, I listen to all of her content, of course, Barrett. You, you never know, it's a cornerstone of my week. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but but I do think Kansas State is a team that's being uh, forgotten about when it comes to the Big Twelve, just because people are enamored with BYU now. And uh, but but I think if K State goes to Iowa State and wins, they'll uh, they'll be in the Big Twelve championship game. So I hope that doesn't happen because I got I got nice Iowa State futures, but. Uh, might be a way for me to kind of hedge my bet a little bit here because I do think K-State would want a rematch with BYU uh, should they play again. Uh, anything else for the uh, for the room before we let everybody go? Uh, uh, my last nugget will be it will be Bucks or Pass Free on Monday Night Football, but Jeff, we'll be busy because 70 college basketball games on Monday. Our little buddy's going to give oh, out picks. Sometimes oh, my God. The I, other cannot, way, I so cannot wait. We're Sometimes. Be you see, but, but there's a there's a, a a flaw on the algorithm now. Like there there was some cha- like are, are we guaranteed like the methodology behind the picks is going to be the same because uh, do 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 we do last we- year last year our friend was forty five percent in college basketball and it was glorious because I think you tracked this for the first like two months of the season that our friend had only five winning days. And the next day I was, I still was have like it guaranteed to be an offer. And I just, I would bet like a unit and a half or two units the next day after a winning day. Oh, I, you for, I will. I totally forgot about that. Oh, I can't wait. Oh, it's the but best. We can't have these days where they own oh, five, own oh, six, and then people shame this person into not giving exactly w- w- which we happened. Two yeah. and four is steady. Two and four slow and steady wins the race. I, can't, oh, I forgot about Monday. Yes, you are right. Yes. Uh, I have bucks team total under. We'll cover that in a few minutes. I don't think the Bucks are going to score in this game. Chiefs might not either, but um, I don't. Uh, I don't expect uh, a high scoring game in this one. Um, do, is is lastly here? Are, are the Yankees paying Juan Soto? Oh goodness! Yeah, I they think have I to. think they are. Carl Ravitch has seven hundred million dollars with his contract. Oh, it's a tough dynamic to give him that much more than Judge, but they cannot afford to go back what, to life without Soto. I mean, why don't you do what the Dodgers do and just defer the money to later? Like uh, Yankees have money, they could just defer it to ten years from now. Yeah. By the way, by the way, Soto I, agree to that though. What I mean, I, I guess not. the difference is Otani has so much money coming from from endorsements. The Dodgers, yeah. he got no, they got no points on that. He just deferred the money with no points for ten years, which is just incredibly generous by Otani. Well, I just found the, uh, the the log from from last year. There there was a stretch where our friend went one and six, two and six, <laughs> one and three, two and three, four and four. So we, we leveled it out there. Two eight and one. No, you know, sa- it's those Saturdays when, yeah. when when they go two eight and one. I love yeah, it. Like, yeah, yeah, and, and that was a Saturday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that oh. was that was a uh, that was a plus twenty three point two unit day for your boy. That's better than Joe DiMaggio's history. Right there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, you see, we just we need to make sure we get back in that wheelhouse. Don't shame anybody. Just no. sometimes it's better when you know someone like me who's in a cold a cold rut in the NFL the last couple weeks. Just know who to fade, know who to yeah. bet him again. Encourage them to keep. You got to fire right. some more. Wait, what does what does Clay Travis joke about shooters shoot when you're in a uh, a, a cold run? So you just encourage them to keep betting you'll 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 fight your way out of it you'll make you make make you make your picks you'll make your money you'll wind up winning some games and and, and all will be good but yeah early early season college basketball what could possibly be better than that uh another gambling group chat in the uh in the books here john uh, appreciate you as always will uh tough one for the yanks but we'll be okay we're going to get uh, dexter lawrence to your uh to, to your vikings jeff and i'll be back shortly to wrap it up Another successful gamble group chat bear. 
Uh, I gotta make it out to Del Mar. I, I've always wanted to do yes. that. I, I drive by it, as I mentioned. John made it sound like the most magical place of all time. So uh, we'll have to make it out there. But you're right, betting on the ponies is uh, it's not fun. I don't know why we do it. Why do we do it? I don't do it. I just take your. I just we have because we have problems. I just text you and you tell me what to wager on, and then I do it. Yeah, we 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 we've got issues. And that's not the only issues we have. You know, who else has issues right now. The Tampa Bay offense is going to Kansas City. That's my fate of the week, guys. They love turnovers. They love turning that ball over. They also don't have any wide receivers, and they're going into Kansas City for Monday Night Football. Kansas City's defense, guys, fifth in scoring defense, second in rush yards per time. They've held every running back they've placed this season bare under their season <laughs> rushing total. They have done a great job this year. Now you have Tampa Bay coming in. No Mike Evans, no Godwin. They started fast against Atlanta, slow down the second half of that game. They're on the road again, back-to-back -back weeks. We know what they want to do. They want to run the football. <laughs> they want to throw the running backs. The running backs had 13 receptions, Irving and White. The Chiefs know this now. Like, they know their game plan. So, uh, I think Bucks under 17 and a half points is my fate of the week. I've been playing these team totals under every week, Bear. I kind of like this uh, this angle yeah. I've been doing uh, the, the, the last couple of weeks here. Yeah, team team, team total unders are uh, certainly a, a side that I like to like to play at. Penn State team total under was my college yeah. best bet uh, of the week as well. And with the way some of these NFL lines are these days, I – have a hard time beating that number. And I think in these kind of derivative opportunities, you can. I, better. I cannot find five plays for the contest this week. It's a problem. Yeah. I found. I have two. Uh, how many did I, did, did, did I have I, did Packers I, and I have my next wager I'm going to give. <laughs> That's all I have so far. Uh, I found two. Yeah. Yeah. And one of them is my best bet presented by DraftKings Sportsbook. New Orleans Saints minus seven and a half. It's Carolina Panthers. It's kind of alluded to it with John uh, on the telecast. I, I think getting Derek Carr back. I mean, and even Carr came. He's like, I'm not a savior, but he's clearly an improvement over what they had. Uh, they, their Kamara is getting healthier, and the Panthers are just. I, I, lo I love that Sean Payton called them out last week and basically said, yeah, that's not a good offense that we faced. And it's an offense that's going to be even worse without Deontay Johnson now. Like, I, I don't, I mean, the Saints need to break that losing streak in the, in, in the worst possible way. So we will uh, we'll take our chances here with, with the Saints and Survivor and the uh, okay. and the Saints minus seven and a half. I hope going, they keep going, going, going double jeopardy here and really, really rolling the dice, setting myself up for absolute disappointment. I hope they keep losing because... The Panthers, uh, you hope the Panthers keep losing. Yeah, because I want cheaper tickets uh, when they play the Chiefs. In a couple of weeks, I'm, like, I'm probably taking my my kid. Oh, nice! Go. Yeah, uh, they uh, they play the Chiefs uh, right before Thanksgiving. I'm looking at the tickets right now. I want to. I want to. I don't really pull like the ex, the former player, like give me free tickets card. I just. I oh yeah, tickets. I was gonna say. I, I was just gonna say that's a good job out of you to not well, pull on a favor. Well, what I will do. Well, see, see, I have to. You'll, I, you'll you'll call it in when it's out. I have to. Yeah, well, yeah. I have to prioritize the favor I want. Like right. I would rather get sideline passes before the game. Take my kid down right. there, then I get tickets. Right. So I have to choose my right. favor that I ask for. It's, it's good. Um, and the visiting tickets, which I probably have a better chance of getting with the Chiefs, are terrible in the NFL. They put everyone in the upper deck, and I'm not playing that game. But like, oh man, let's see how many tickets right here. Oh, I can't oh, wait to go phone to this game. Yeah, yeah, I love getting the pop, I love getting the, the pop up next messages here. Got, got a uh, got it. Got an audio text message from Doc at Show Boy. That could be anything. Oh, anything. That could, yeah, that could be know. anything. Maybe he might be asking me to go on tomorrow. We'll see. Well, and then, and then I got, and then uh, my, my glasses must be in because Dr. Delaporta just called. Me, so, they, uh, <laughs> so I'll have to go on Monday and go pick up nice. the glasses. New glasses. All right, they're actually they're actually frames that I've had just with a new prescription because yeah. I like the I like the frames. Like I just the frames, yeah. wear them, so. Do you just have one pair of glasses? No, I have multiple. Oh, yeah, I, yeah, I like yeah, rotating yeah, rotating and out. Lose a little bit of that. Yeah. All right, my best bet presented by DraftKings Sportsbook. I'm going back to it, Bear. The Cleveland Browns, baby. Plus one and a half home against the Chargers. Again, I, I mentioned this again in the group chat. They're playing for the decal I, on their helmet. I, oh, we that, was, that was He's, How <laughs> great was that? <laughs> for those who missed it, Jameis Winston gave this pregame speech. That, Guys, we play for the name on the front of the jersey and for the decal on the helmet. Well, we don't have a decal on our helmet, but nonetheless, you know what I mean, great. guys. It was so funny. And, and, and then in the postgame interview on the sideline, I, I, I don't know, it might have been Amanda Balionis who was doing it. And he, did he, started, he started talking about Eminem. Like, uh, it was, it was, he started, he started, <laughs> he basically rap lose yourself. It was, it yes. was awesome. Um, I just think that we have, we're undervaluing the addition of Jameis Winston to this offense. But I mentioned it with John Murray. Like, when, when a, when a quarterback is out, the number moves like seven points, right? But like, I feel like this is, I'm not saying we move it seven points the other direction, but he's worth, more than they're giving him, in my opinion. 
I think and, so too. And the Chargers are the Chargers. They're going to run the football. They can't score touchdowns right now either. Now you're on the road, outside. We can't score touchdowns. And this is going to be a grinded game. Both teams want to slow this down. So I like the Browns here, plus the one and a half. I'm going to ride this Jameis Winston train till it derails Bear. I, I, I like it. I gave you the AccuWeather forecast for uh, for Green Bay. Let me go to the AccuWeather forecast it, it, for it, it can't be for, great for, for, for Cleveland. On I was going to say if it's raining in Green Bay, is a chance it could be. Let's see. Let's go. AccuWeather Accu forecast Sunday in Sunday in Cleveland be high of 61, low 58, and cloudy. Not bad. Slight chance of rain shower. Winds out of the east southeast at 10 to 15 miles an hour. Rain moving in later at night. Overcast and rain showers of time with picking up winds. Followed by a nice sunny Monday afternoon. I uh, think you have to do. Doesn't look like weather's going to be an issue. I think you have to do your your big new kickoff reads in that voice now. <laughs> they, they, they'd, love, they, they'd, they'd, they'd love that AccuWeather brought on the eights brought to you by uh, that's it we did it. a podcast yeah, I we, think yeah 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 that, 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 uh, of all the podcasts Supposedly. we did uh, that, that was that was one kind of but nah that was fun now you're off to State College I'm up to State place. College at LaGuardia Philadelphia probably hustle from like uh, the A terminal over to the F terminal. Going to have to get in that shuttle bus because it's a tight connection, regional jet. So I'll have to wait for the bags to get unloaded. Yeah, it'll be, it'll, it'll, it'll be uh, a little stressful, not, not a super long layover, but the, the connections are terrible. So appreciate John. Appreciate Will. Appreciate you out there for watching on our YouTube, YouTube channel for, uh, downloading on Spotify, Apple, wherever you get your podcasts. Uh, continue to do so. Enjoy going back and forth on social media with you as well. For Will, for John, for Jeff, I'm Bear. Remember, the less you bet, the more you lose when you win. <laughs>